Hi, my name is Daisy and I will be showing you how to make an animal out of recycled materials. Today we are going to make Sally. What type of animal do you think Sally will be? A sea lion or a harbor seal? If you said harbor seal, you'd be right. Although sea lions and harbor seals are sometimes confused with each other, they have many differences that distinguish them. Let's take a look. To make Sally, I used a plastic lid, a plastic water bottle, and a toilet paper roll. First, I cut out a hole in the lid and stuck the cap of the bottle through the hole. And then I colored it black so it would be the nose. I drew on the whiskers and the eyes and I taped the toilet paper roll cutouts to the bottle. Of course, you can make this with any materials you have in your house and it's even better if they're recycled. The body of Sally the Harbor Seal has an interesting shape that allows it to move quickly and efficiently through the water. It is shaped like a torpedo, larger on one end and narrower on the other. The torpedo-like shape allows the seal to navigate through strong currents of the NYC Harbor to obtain foods such as mollusks, crustaceans, and fish. Can you move through the water like a harbor seal? To make the body, I will be using a plastic water bottle. Sally spends most of her time in the water and her body has adapted to this aquatic lifestyle. Harbor seals have stubby front flippers that make it difficult for them to move on land, while sea lions have longer and larger flippers that make it easier for them to move. Sea harbor seals flippers don't rotate either, instead they move side to side. This allows them to swim gracefully in water, but this makes it difficult for them to move on land. The flippers combined with the shape of Sally's body cause her to move in a caterpillar-like motion on land. To make these flippers, I used toilet paper rolls. Now let's move on to Sally's head. The interesting thing about Sally is that when she is underwater, she is able to open and close her ears at will. Sally has ears that have no external ear flaps, just little holes on either side of her head. Sea lions, on the other hand, have external ear flaps on their ears. A harbor seal's eyes are able to dilate according to the light that is around them. Another cool thing about their eyes is that they are able to refract light, making it easier for them to see far. Now let's look at Sally's whiskers. Sally's whiskers are super sensitive and they are what allow her to detect her prey and their movements. Her nostrils are able to open and close, which helps prevent air from escaping when diving. The air is necessary to keep Sally buoyant. You might have heard that sea lions have a loud, aggressive barking sound. While sea lions are extremely social creatures and like to bark to communicate, defend themselves, and or mark territory, harbor seals like Sally are quieter, less social, and vocalize a grunting sound. Can you bark like a sea lion and grunt like a harbor seal? Very nice. It looks like Sally is all finished, so thank you for participating and watching. Hi everyone, my name is Emily. I'm a Discovery Guide leader at the Central Park Zoo, and I'm going to be showing you how to make a harbor seal habitat from household materials. If you haven't checked out building a harbor seal out of recycled materials, then you should totally check that out since you learn a lot about the harbor seal's body, which is adapted to the environment that we'll be creating today. Also, if you do the harbor seal video first, you'll be able to use the harbor seal that you made in the habitat we're gonna make right now. In the Building a Harbor Seal video, we learned that harbor seals are marine mammals, which means that they love the water. When you visit the Central Park Zoo, most likely you, are to, you will see our two harbor seals, Adam and Anson, swimming and relaxing in the water. Harbor seals are not well adapted for the land, so the habitat we will be building them today will be wet. Harbor seals are, can be found all over the globe, on the west coast, Harbor seals are found from Alaska to the Sea of Cortez, and they are found up and down the East Coast as well. With harbor seals having diverse habitats, we have some room for creativity when building them. So right now I'm going to pan over to my kitchen sink, and I will see you guys in a minute.
Okay, so this is the basin I'm going to be using for my Harbor Seal Habitat, and it's my kitchen sink, but you can use any container that has the ability to hold water. The depth of the container won't matter since harbor seals can thrive on the surface and often dive to around 300 feet of water, but they've been recorded to dive at around 1,460 feet. So I'm going to add the water to my sink and I will be right back when it's all filled. Okay, so as you can see, I filled my sink up to about the height of my fingers, which is a about the perfect uh, depth that you're going to want to go to. So now it's time to start using our imaginations and thinking. What kind of habitat would a harbor seal enjoy? So harbor seals are found in various oceans and they are also found in our New York waterways and harbors. So at the bottom of many of these harbors and oceans or in whatnot, there are rocks or any other type of sediment. So I would not recommend using sand if you're using a sink or a, or a bathtub or something because you don't want to clog up the drain. So instead I'm going to be using some large rocks. When you place your rocks in your habitat, you're not going to want to drop them in or make a loud crash because you don't want to break your sink by accident. This applies to any container you're using. If you drop the rocks down too fast, you could break the container and that will cause a big, big mess. So I'm just going to finish placing these rocks in. Use as many or as little rocks as you want. I wouldn't recommend using uh, rocks that are larger than the size of your hand just because you don't want to break anything. And yeah, so I have all of my rocks placed at the bottom here and we're already replicating a really good ocean environment. So now we're going to start to think about what the harbor seal might want. So harbor seals, after they're done diving, they love to rest on rocks and icebergs and beaches that they have easy access to. Because remember, harbor seals are not very well adapted for land, so they're going to want to just have a platform to roll onto and rest. They're not going to be walking around on land all that much. So to replicate this, I have this uh, platform made out of plastic building pieces, as you can see here, and I'm just going to have it float right there on the surface of the water. It's going to float around, it's going to move around, it's okay if yours does that too. Um, it's also okay if you have maybe a rock that sticks out of the water, that can work as a platform as well because those are actually really common in harbor seal habitats. Also if you have something maybe made of wood or cork or even ice, that could work as well. So yeah, this is my habitat so far. Alright, so in the next step we're going to be adding some food, so I will see you in one second. Okay. The next step that you're wanna, going to want to add is harbor seals diet. So their diet is made up of mollusks, squid, crustaceans, and fish. So to represent this, I have a few different types of um, recyclable materials. The first is some pieces of shells that I collected on a beach a while ago. So these are some mussel shells that have been eroded a little bit. You can put those at the bottom. This is a scallop shell that I have that I'm also going to add to represent foods that harbor seals could eat. Here's another one of the mussel shells. And now I'm going to add a school of fish. So for this fish, I used um, fabric, recyclable fabric. Um, as you can see here, it's a bluish fabric cut into little triangles to represent like a small school of fish that a harbor seal can go after. So I'm gonna plop these in the water here, and there they go. They're floating a little bit, but that's totally okay. So if I push them in, they might start sinking. And they're gonna swim around for our harbor seal to enjoy. So yeah, harbor seals will be able to eat these. They can eat the fish, the squid, mollusks, whatever you choose to add. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next step and I'll see you in a second. Unfortunately, the sad truth is that harbor seals are affected by ocean pollution. That can mean ocean fishing or dumping, but harbor seals are especially affected by ocean plastics. To represent ocean plastics, I'm going to use some other small plastic building pieces that come in large shapes, sizes, and colors. So I'm just going to add them in here. As you can see, they vary greatly by shape, by color, by texture. They're very, very different. And this is how plastic in the ocean often is. Not all plastic is the same. Well, some plastic can be really big, some plastic can be really small, and even some plastics can be almost microscopic. These plastics are called microplastics, and they're typically between one millimeter and five millimeters large. I'm gonna use, represent these by using like multicolored fish gravel, and I'm gonna add it in here. 
sprinkle it in like this. So again, if you're using a sink, I would not use any gravel that's smaller than this. And you could just sprinkle it in here. So as you can see, the small pieces of microplastic outnumber the pieces of large plastic, but it's hard to tell because they're so small. So harbor seals can eat these and, can, and this can cause diseases and it's also presumed to affect harbor seal reproduction. So this could be a huge issue. So these are the objects that I've added to Im that impact harbor seals habitat. So as you can see, the habitat is very dirty now. It doesn't look very friendly for harbor seals. So our actions have consequences and we've been damaging their habitats. So now, I'm go now how are we going to clean this up? That is a good question I'm going to tackle in one second. So as you can see, these plastics are damaging to several ocean environments, including for the harbor seals. Scientists are still trying to figure out ways to be able to clean up these microplastics and larger plastics from the ocean. Cleanup efforts are being started around the world to try and help with this cause. To represent this, I'm going to be using a sieve about this size, and I'm going to try to scoop out and filter out all the pieces of plastic. So here we go. So as you could see, I'm able to get the larger plastics quite easily with the sieve. I have some of these plastic building pieces right here. I'm going to continue taking these out. Again, the floating pieces are easier to come by. It's going to be the microplastics that are a bit harder to get. So I will cut out to when these are all cleaned up and I will be right back. Okay, so after using the tool that I used for a long time, I was able to get out all of the pieces of plastic and the microplastics from the habitat. So this shows that if we work together and support ocean cleaning initiatives, we can at least get a start on cleaning out the plastics and microplastics from our ocean. And again, as you saw, it took me a very long time to do this. And it, that's going to happen in real life too. It's going to take a very long time to clean out all of the plastics and microplastics in our oceans. But we're left with a beautiful harbor seal habitat. And now let's test it out. Here's my harbor seal that I made. He's made out of recycled clay and some markers that I used to color on the coat. And we're gonna see if he likes our habitat. So here he goes. He's swimming, he's swimming. I think he likes it. He loves all the food sources he has. And once he's done diving, he can come up on his little platform and rest, just like that. So yes, that is my final habitat. So again, this is the final look at the habitat that I created. And hopefully you guys got the chance to create yours as well. This is what a ha good habitat looks like and this is what it should be. Thank you guys so much for watching this video on how to make a harbor seal habitat. I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys are able to make some awesome habitats.